Welcome back to capexforextrading.com. In this lesson we're going to focus on the average true range, which is also known as the ATR. We're going to discuss two ways in which this indicator can be used. Number one, we're going to discuss how we can use this low volatility readings to get into a new trend. And number two, we're going to show you how we can use these readings to assign an appropriate stop loss for our trading that's relative to the volatility of current prices. Now the sole purpose of the ATR indicator is to measure volatility and it does that by plotting it on a line that you see here. So obviously the higher the line goes, the higher the volatility. The lower the line goes, the lower the volatility. So don't get confused about direction because this indicator does not concern itself with direction. So just because the line is going up does not mean that it's measuring an uptrend only. In fact, in this example, it is this downtrend here that's being measured in terms of volatility. In another example, you can see that the line is going up here, but we have an uptrend that is measured here. So remember, this does not identify direction, it simply measures strength. So as we mentioned earlier, the first way in which we can use the ATR indicator is to identify low levels of volatility that enable us to get into a new trend. So the first thing that we need to do is identify where low volatility actually is. Now for some reason, some traders use the reading of 0.0001 as a reading of low volatility. Now that reading is way down here below um, my indicator window, which I can't reach. And as you can see, when we're trading the one hour time frame, that reading of low volatility doesn't really work because there's no touches of the horizontal line. There's no reading or dips below that line that will tell me that the charts or the prices are in low volatility. So we find that the reading of 0.0006 is an almost perfect reading of low volatility. Now you don't have to use that reading. What you can do is have a look at historically where the trends have began and ended. Began and ended. And then associate the dips or touches below the horizontal line with the beginnings of these trends. So as you can see here, if I get my cursor, we have this area where the indicator has dipped below a horizontal line, but we also have a beginning of a new trend in the price chart here. And we've got the same here. We have a, dip, um, a reading below the horizontal line, and we also have a new downtrend that begins at exactly the same point. Okay, so have a little play with your charts depending on which time frames you use. But if you are using the one hour time frame, a reading of 0 0.0006 should be good enough for you. So when we're using the ATR in this manner, the low volatility reading itself is not enough to get us into a new trend. The reason why is because all this shows is that the current trend has run out of steam. It doesn't tell us that a new one has begun. For that, we need two simple moving averages. The first one is the 8 period simple moving average and the second is the 21 period simple moving average. And what we're looking for in this scenario are two things. One, we need prices to be above the 8 period moving average if we're trading upwards and we also need a crossover of the two averages and that's exactly what we get here. So if I draw a horizontal line that identifies the point at which all of this has happened, that would be here. So we've got prices above and we've got the crossover. And we also have a low volatility reading that's already happened. So we're almost good to go to take this trade. But the last thing we need to do is check the four hour time frame to ensure the same has happened. So we've got prices above the eight period simple moving average and the averages themselves have already crossed over. So the uptrend looks like it's going to be very strong. We we'll go back to the H1 or the one hour time frame and we we'll take this trade there. So that's how you would use this indicator to get into a new trend. Now the last way in which we can use the ATR is by using its readings to assign an appropriate stop loss that's relative to the currency pair's volatility. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail here. So what I've got in front of me here are two charts, chart A and chart B. Now chart A moves about 100 pips per day. Chart B moves 200 pips per day. So let's say we've taken a trade out at exactly the same time in both of these charts. In chart A, we assign a 10 pip stop loss to our trade. 
Now in chart B, we cannot assign a 10 pip stop loss because it's not relative to the currency pair's volatility. It is only relative to chart A's volatility. So because chart B moves double the amount of points to that of chart A, technically we should set a stop loss that's double the size, so that would be 20 pips. But this is exactly what the ATR indicator allows us to do. Now the most common formula is to place a stop loss two ATRs away from current market price. Now I'm going to explain this in a much more simplified manner. So the only thing you've got to do, for example, if we're looking into chart A, is have a look at the current reading of ATR, and that reading is 8. What you need to do is multiply 8 by 2 to give us 16, and then place a stop loss 16 pips away from the current market price in this chart. Now if we're looking at chart B, our ATR reading is 14. So we would multiply 14 by 2 to give us 28 and we would place a stop loss that's 28 pips away from the current market price. So by doing this it allows you or it allows your trade to have room to move around and the readings that you're using for the ATR relative to your stop loss are specific to the charts that you're looking at and they're not general in across the board of all the currency pairs. Okay, so that completes this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, do let us know. Please follow us on our channel or subscribe to our Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn or Twitter pages and we shall see you for the next lesson.